So I've been heavy into console gaming over the last year and a bit, mainly because PC parts are super expensive, and honestly, consoles have been a more relaxing experience for me. I've gamed on projectors, monitors, and TVs, but nothing has really come close to the unique experience I've had with BenQ's recent 4K X3000i gaming projector. And believe me, I know projectors are more of a niche product to have, but this dedicated gaming projector drives a competitive price to 4K TVs and the gaming experience. So now instead of using a TV, I can get absolutely clapped by 12 year olds, but on an even larger display. With 4K HDR gaming and entertainment, Android TV, and modes between 60 and 240 hertz, this projector has actually blown me away. It's not often tech legit makes me say, I can't believe this. So here's a review of the BenQ X3000i from a tired dad who really appreciates a good console experience. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. On this channel, I talk about gaming, tech, and a few things in between, so if you enjoy the video, be sure to like or subscribe, and if you don't, you're gonna get a hangnail. Okay, so first things first, unboxing and setup. Opening up, first thing you got is the BenQ QS01 Android TV stick, which is actually what runs the whole experience for apps. After that, you've got the dedicated remote for swapping inputs, volumes, settings, and stuff like that. It's tiny and has everything you need. You've got the power cable as well as the small accessories kit, which has the remote batteries, the adjustable feet, as well as the paperwork that everybody definitely reads. And that's just about it. In terms of how this thing looks, it's actually pretty nice. It's a dense cube of gaming glory coming in at about 14 pounds, something to keep in mind if you do plan on ceiling mounting this. It has a basic two-tone gamer aesthetic, but nothing too outrageous. The white and the black body goes well with the neon orange trim, and the front end is super reflective. Something you won't find though are threadings to attach a tripod. A lot of projectors do come with that, and this isn't one of them. Now, in terms of specs, this thing is really fully loaded and it's by far the best projector I've gotten my hands on. This projector puts out a solid 4K 60Hz as well as 1080p at either 120Hz or even 240Hz. Coming in with a brightness of 3000 ANSI lumens, this is absolutely wild in terms of brightness and it manages this with a 4 LED setup. Most projectors only have three LEDs, red, green, and blue, but this one does have a fourth LED to pump up the brightness of the image and somehow not washing out the image. Some sort of wizardry is at hand here, but either way, the added brightness is definitely welcome. This also does have 100% DCI-P3 color coverage, offering HDR and HDR10 experiences. The LED is rated for 20,000 hours in auto mode and up to 30,000 hours in the additional eco modes. For speakers, we are looking at two 5 watt speakers, which I'll definitely be testing. For ports, you have three HDMI 2.0 ports, two on the back end and one internally. Of course, there's the power input, SPDIF, RS-232 VGA, and an audio out jack. You know this projector is for real as well with a 12 volt trigger. If you do set this up and turn your projector on, you could have it hooked up to a motorized projector or an audio setup and automatically power on. That's pretty dope. Diving into the setup, it's actually really simple, but it also depends on how you do plan to set it up. For myself, I don't have a theater room or anything like that, but rather a huge wall that I like to use for projectors. And I legit just turn my couch around and make a special night of whenever I use this. The projector setup is simple enough though. The top end comes off with two screws giving you access to the internal HDMI port and here's where you install the QS01 Android stick. It's actually a rather small area, so I'm not sure if other Android sticks will fit, but either way, you still have the two external HDMI ports for anything else you might need to plug in. And once that's installed, setup only takes about 10 minutes or less, including software updates. Logging into Google is easy enough, and they give you options to install popular apps from the get-go. And that's it. Once you're in, it's time to game. Now, getting into gaming is definitely my favorite part, and in pure honesty, I was not expecting this to be as good as it is. My wife and I simply lost our minds when I first booted up Horizon Forbidden West, and I even used BenQ's remended game profiles which made this look even better. Across all the popular games, BenQ does offer these sort of recipes for color profiles to make your games look even better. I did test this on Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, and Hogwarts Legacy. I'll have those color profile settings linked down below if you do want to check them out. And in terms of all the recent hardware I've used to game Call of Duty, I've finally reached Ultra Instinct since I actually dunked on the 12 year olds for once instead of me just playing Reese spawn simulator, I've legit peaked. This footage is actually on the 1080p mode at 120Hz on the PlayStation 5, and honestly, even at 1080, it looked amazing. Not to mention the 1080p game mode has a 4 milliseconds response time, and even at 4K in other games, it's still only 16 milliseconds, which to me is imperceptible. And testing out the HDR capabilities, I had to hop in Cyberpunk 2077. That game is legit made for it. Driving around Night City with all the neons and colors and reflections and everything else is just so freaking nice. This footage was on the 4K 60Hz mode, and if it's 
it sounds like I'm fanboying, it's because I am, this projector is literally just sick. And like I mentioned, similar to Horizon, God of War, and all its 4K HDR glory, lets me get my Greek on with Kratos in style. For color profiles though, if you don't want to curate your own or use any of the recipes, there are different presets such as HDR FPS, HDR RPG, and more. Again, you can always change these to your liking or swap them around manually. And outside of gaming though, watching content is equally enjoyable, especially with having a screen so large. The display can comfortably be between 60 inches and 150 inches. My setup here is about 120 inch display size and I don't even have a projector screen to keep things crispy. This is just straight up against my wall. The way I have this set up too is my projector is head on, although if you do have to put your projector at an angle, you can always set up keystoning so the image is still correct. Keep in mind if gaming you do want to avoid keystoning as this will affect your game mode and response time. There are different image profiles too, like gaming, there's the cinema, game, again HDR game, and similar to the game profiles, you can swap this out manually to your liking. Watching movies in 4K HDR is still an insane experience, and again, in terms of my setup, it's not permanent, but I do plan on ceiling mounting this projector to make it a little easier to use. In terms of the overall UI and usability, it's perfectly adequate. I can't say it beats anything like Apple TV or even my PlayStation, but it mostly has everything you need to get a good experience for watching your content. It has the most popular apps like Amazon, on Prime and Disney Plus, although Netflix is noticeably missing. Again, you can always just plug in another entertainment box or even a laptop if you specifically want Netflix. This projector does offer the ability to cast from other devices as well if you do have that and want to share your own media. With the 3000 ANSI lumens, daytime or ambient lighting is easily viewable as well if you did want to get your fix during the day, and I really can't complain. Now for sound, you have two 5 watt speakers, which sound decent enough considering the size of the projector. They don't get so loud, but if you really are building out a theater setup, you're going to want a separate audio setup as well. For myself, I do still prefer using a set of headphones for my movies, and even more so when gaming. I actually use my headphones plugged into my controller for this, especially when playing Call of Duty, and it worked wonderfully. In terms of the ambient noise coming from the projector itself. BenQ does say this is about 32 decibels. I personally can't measure that, but even at its 4K 60Hz mode, it's not really noticeable to me at least. But unlike any other projector, this isn't just simply okay for gaming. It's quite literally meant for gaming, and it's unlike any other experience I've had. The look of these games on the big screen has me second guessing conventional setups, and between the low latency and image, this is legit a great option for both cinema and especially gaming. Coming in at $2,000 US, it's definitely expensive, but the experience, flexibility, and portability of a projector might make this worth it for you. In any case, I'm looking forward to playing New Game Plus and God of War Ragnarok and finally finishing Horizon Forbidden West, but let me know down below in the comments, what would you be playing on here? Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.